Okay, should we get started? I know. I, he's not answering this one. We can start with Cool. So, hi. Hi. Cool. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking about the politics DA. Um, at that link, the PowerPoint is live if, if, in a PDF. So, if anyone wants to follow along or wants to use it in any other situation or format or show it to your novices, go for it. But, uh, ah, politics. <laughs> so, what do we, well, this is, uh, let's change a little slow. So, just to kind of get gauge everyone's kind of familiarity level, um, there's a few questions up here. So what exactly do we mean when we say politics in relation to debate? Legal officials getting butt hurt. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually very what? true. He's not really wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no typical scenario is that like they're good. Okay, perfect. Well, and she brings up the idea of political capital. So, can someone other than Becca give me the definition of political capital? Yeah. It's just basically your ability to get shit done. It's simple as that. You have your ability to, however much, you know, another way of saying is just political influence, uh, affluence, whatever you want to call it. Um, ability to get people to do what you want them to do. Okay, okay. And then, are, do you think there are different types of politics arguments? Yeah. So what are they? Uh, yeah, you can have political capital, or you can have, uh, or you can have elections to set. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, all these answers are pretty much spot on. Politics is just the way that the enactment of a policy through fiat itself will actually create additional effects in the political spectrum and affecting policies that are passed or not passed, as well as political capital is just like, exactly like Bridget said, a measurement of political influence. And so there are two types of politics arguments. I like to group them as a winner's win and winner's lose, because I think that determines your scenario even more so than agenda and elections. Agenda is also referred to as backlash, um, and that's a scenario that Becca described and that we're going to be kind of getting into a little bit. So. I'm going to break this down because I think that each aspect of the politics DA um, is a little bit more unique than your average DA and has more nuances to it. So in the politics DA, I think the uniqueness is one of the most important concepts. Um, it's really necessary and important to establish that the bill is actually at the top of the docket. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit more when we talk about being the affirmative. But ideally, like ideally in research, a good uniqueness scenario is going to kind of tell the story and tell that narrative that um, Doggett was talking about before. And the narrative starts with the story of contested votes, typically. You typically want to say that, yes, this policy is going to pass now, but it's going to be close. There's a key number of votes that are contested. This sets up a more compelling link story that we'll get into. But So here are two scenarios. Um, one is like, President needs political capital with either party to pass or defeat the bill. As you are all aware, we're using the DPP scenario. So I know one scenario that was big, especially on the education topic, was President Obama needs political capital with Republicans to pass TPP education reform, SAP's political capital. Um, or it's also more um, party um, angle, where it's actually the Republicans or Democrats need uh, political capital with the other party to pass a bill. And then within that, uh, you really don't set the winners win, winners lose scenario until you get into the Lincoln internal league level. So uniqueness is the one part of the politics DA that I say you can absolutely cannot lose to this. I mean, you have to be absolutely certain that the bill that is currently going to pass hasn't been passed before you started your dissad. Um, there's been a couple times where I've seen politics DAs where people weren't updating their uniqueness scenarios regularly, and over winter break, the bill had passed. And that dissent was completely dead. Um, I like to preempt, personally, and I think if you read a card in the uniqueness that answers the warrants for why it won't pass, people will say, oh, it's, it's popular or it's, it's, it's dead, you know, it's, it's completely inevitable that it's not going to pass. 
So I think the more you can do to preempt, the, uh, the easier it becomes for you as a negative to just answer with extensions rather than having to read additional cards in the one in R. Um, yeah, I mean, political capital in the uniqueness scenario, if you can try to set up, I know it, you can't really measure <laughs> political capital, um, but you can definitely set up a scenario in which the uniqueness specifies that, hey, like the current amount of Obama's political capital is what's going to influence this bill to pass. And especially if you can find a uniqueness card like that, you're going to be on the right track. Um, definitely with politics, as this is a very particular dis uh, disadvantage, you really want to know the literature. I think this is, I mean, you want to know the literature for everything that you run, but even more so with politics, um, because if there is a threat that this bill could not pass, that this, that you can lose, you want to um, try to bring that in. So here's an example you need this card to kind of set up. This was back from the, I believe, the agricultural topic of a few years ago. This is an old back file, but um, as you can just see here, sets up um, a particular, like, a particular agenda. Obama's alluding to immigration reform. Um, there's it's pushing conservatives, and eight U.S. senators are backing comprehensive immigration reform in that chamber. This is a solid card. It sets up the uniqueness. We know there's a certain number of votes. We know who the main actors are, and it sets up a very effective uniqueness scenario. That brings us to the link. So the link, as with, oh, the link, as with really every disad is key, but I think, again, even more so in the politics DA, that the link has to really prove how the affirmative is going to affect political capital. Um, so especially in the link scenario, I mean, obviously you want to have a generic link because you never, excuse me, you never know the, the particular cases that you're going to face, but you want your evidence to be specific as possible. If you can find your evidence that says Republicans don't like this specific bill, you're going to be 100 times better off than if you say Republicans don't like the environment or Democrats don't like guns. <laughs> Generalizations, so don't take any of that at face value. Um, so if you can find that like uh, the majority numbers of those senators, so like on the scenario where we have eight votes, if you can find a uniqueness card detail, or if you can find a link card detailing the issue and that, like, that certain senators ha are, uh, have certain opinions on the bill that's going to be passed and you can set up that you are going to be able to affect those specific um, contested votes, your DA is going to be pretty hard to link out of. So I know that can be difficult to find, but um, if you can find evidence that specifically mentions certain political actors are key in this case, I, uh, the president, but if you are running, so you also in the link scenario set up whether you're running a winner's lose or a winner's win DA. So in a winner's lose politics DA, you want to show that the plan loses political capital with the party that holds the close votes. So winner's lose would mean in the plan, this is something Obama, so using the example card from earlier, in the plan, Obama's pushing for immigration reform. If Obama gets that passed, Obama is the winner but he loses the political capital with the party that is need, that he needs to have the political capital with to get the votes. In the winner's win scenario, it basically says Obama gets a political win or the Republicans get a political win, and that increases their political capital, making their political capital strong and able to pass another bill. And I think the, the winner's win scenario is much more likely under an elections DA, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, and then you really want to have multiple link scenarios. So please, if you can, no generics. I, I mean, I think generics are, I think it's not hard to find cards that say, like, say specific parties don't like specific bills or specific topic areas. So another example link card here. Failure to show spending derails the rest of Obama's agenda. Republicans on curbing federal spending loses the necessary precursor. So again, sets up exactly how he's going to uh, lose political capital. Now I took a generic card because I didn't have an AF plan to base this on. Um, so I know, super hypocritical, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> um, and then this is kind of, sometimes you're gonna have, you may wanna in insert a second link card that's almost like an earlier internal link. But uh, I think including the, the idea that who the political actor is that is key to actually getting that passed is important. 
the internal link. Um, it is pretty straightforward. This is mainly just the scenario where you set up what the bill is key to. Um, so we'll see the example card, but for instance, like TPP, key to the economy, economy keeps us out of war, like strong economy reduces the uh, chance for war. So finding descriptions of the bill from reputable sources. Some of the best politics DAs I've seen uh, have, have had um, particular, particular studies done from the bill. Um, oftentimes when you find um, certain groups that have like, oftentimes when there's a particular bill being contested in the House, you uh, both Republicans and Democrats, the parties themselves, push out a lot of literature on that. And from there, you can find some really solid sources in their, in their sites that can really lead to some solid analysis of the bills and actually discuss how the bill is effective, which I think makes for a really easy time controlling the internal link. Um, universal internal link goal is to be logical. I know that's hard in debate where everything links to nuclear war, but <laughs> it's a lot a lot, a lot easier to win a politics DA when you actually have a scenario. Um, you know, kind of gut check it when you're writing it. Example. Gut checking. You have the evidence. I mean, but gut check the evidence. It's, you can find cards that say this is going to lead to nuclear war, but is it really going to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. Every single time. Are you even a debater? Okay. <laughs> but I have a oh, That's on my mouse. <laughs> so, again, internal link card. Pretty straightforward here. Immigration reform increases skilled worker visas. Straightforward. Makes sense. And now we'll get to the impacts. <laughs> so this lecture is over. You now know everything you need to know about the politics of uh, So a good politics debater is going to have multiple impact scenarios. You want to be as efficient as possible with your evidence, and so I suggest you want to have uh, impact scenarios that can directly counter the affirmatives that you can put in there so that you can basically function the DA as a case turn and cross-apply that, or you want to have impacts that are just going to completely outweigh. If you're a good magnitude debater and you love going for those extinction and nuclear war impacts, go ahead and run the impacts that are going to outweigh, but I think a lot of times it's a lot easier to more so counter and negate the affirmative arguments by simply cross-applying the disad internal linking impact scenario as a case turn. Um, bare minimum, high probability, and high magnitude so that you have the flexibility to both, both, you know, uh, if you're running against an opponent, like on last year's topic where everyone was running extinction, there were some really good debates um, that came down to basically uh, high probability is better to evaluate rather than high magnitude. And so there were some really cool like framework debates sort of like that that occurred. And so I think having those scenarios at minimum um, are good. So impacts card, yep, war we all love war, Thayer 2006, greatest hedge uh, writer ever. And let's talk about elections. So St. Anselm's, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the boot guy. Yeah. 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 Trump 2016, mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. So elections, uh, this is something that I think that I don't think you're going to run into this particular scenario a lot this year, but I do think that we're close enough to elections that someone may try to run it. So, I mean, you fundamentally just replace the idea of political capital with the idea that the shift in political capital as a result of the plan causes X candidate or X party to be elected. It's more, it's always more so a winner's win scenario uh, and that they become strong enough. So yeah. This is going to be the example scenario. Donald Trump leading polls, plans popular with Republican voters, voters key to Trump's election. Donald Trump invades Mexico, causing nuclear war when other powers join in. How can you tell the future? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of debate. Um, like I said, I really don't think we're going to see this scenario this year because we're, we're just kind of far enough out from elections, but we are close enough that it's possible. So we'll talk a little bit about the affirmative. Uniqueness, uniqueness, uniqueness. It's going to be, a, it's probably the easiest place to win the politics DA. 
Um, everybody is going to try to find cards that say this bill is going to pass, but a lot of times it's really easy to find cards that say another bill is actually taking precedent over. So like right now we have a TPP scenario politics bill. If I was cutting answers to that politics DA, I would try to find something that says the Iran deal outweighs, it's at the top of the docket, and thus no one's going to be voting on the uh, other bill. Yeah. I've only voted once on uh, non, a non uni Really? Yeah, I usually give a risk. So for me, you have to win the league. And I don't think I'm alone. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I would tell you the safest bet is to go for both. Yeah, that, I mean, that's true. You always want to hit more than yeah. one spot on the DA. I also agree that I need two defensive arguments. But they're really good defensive arguments. Oh, yeah. 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 It that's probably true. means the case solvency is more probable. Yep. Than they said. And we have a good 98. But it's yeah. still defense. Yeah. I know, I mean, at least from what I've learned from kind of judges on my circuit, a lot of the things I hear go for the go hard on the non unique. And I, it just depends on how you view a non-unique argument, if that's defense or if that's offense. Again, judge adaptation always, right? Uh, no link. I think, I always think the no link is a bit harder to win on a politics DA, because I think it's fairly, I think it is a fairly common sense and acceptable position to assume that magically fiating and shoehorning this bill into the current political spectrum is going to affect the current distribution of political capital. But with that being said, I think it's easy. I think it is usually pretty easy to find that certain parties, contested parties or contested voters, like your bill or your your top like the topic area of your bill. It's the internal link. Like I was telling Chris earlier in his practice rounds, I think a lot of debaters uh, are kind of weak internal link debaters. I think the internal link can be a good spot to control the DA. Um, Again, this comes down to using common sense in your internal link scenarios, because for instance, debaters who like to run those big impact scenarios typically have a fairly weak internal link. I mean, anything leading to nuclear war can be pretty easy to win the internal link scenario that no, we've seen this before, doesn't lead to nuclear war, and it takes out the impact. And I mean, as far as the impact, it's just general impact defense. And, Find your, you know, pull out your turns file, pull out your impact defense file, and you should be all right. Um, okay, yeah, so as the app, if throughout the season you're finding the politics to set as being ran a lot, like there was a lot of politics to set on the education topic, not so much on space topic. Preempted insolvency, talking about cards that say like Republicans, Democrats are going to love your plan. Um, and I think it, instead of having to read a whole new card in the AR that's saying, oh, Republicans support passage of the plan, you can just extend across and answer it with that card. I think it, I think it can be a lot easier. Um, yeah, negative stuff usually relies on generic plan popular or plan unpopular. If you can get different, if you can get specific links on the affirmative, um, you'll be in good shape versus the dissets, or I should say good link takeouts. So, questions, comments, and Doggett will give the other half of this lecture. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah? Um, on the note, I think it's on the note where you said that it's good to have cards saying both the Democrats and Republicans know your plan or love your plan. Is it? Is there any time when, it's, um, when there's going to be a card saying that like they can't both love it? or Is there any reason you need a card saying like the majority? Like majority of Democrats and majority of Republicans? I think if the House is in a suit, like if we are in a congressional year where the House has like a super majority or something like that, where a certain party has a super majority. Uh, 60 plus. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 No. Yeah, I think it is 60, it's 63 right, cause to it's be able to, over, to overturn a veto. 100% sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, okay. yeah. I think just, I think it just in general, I mean, That's so many people, sure. there are so many political analysts out there who write and not necessarily saying they're all accurate, but that write that either side support or do not support the bill. So with a little bit of research, you should be able to find decent cards that will say either opponent will or either party will love or hate your plan. And those are something that, as an affirmative debater, you always want to have in your tool. 
in your toolbox because you never know when you're going to be facing a politics disad. And it's, it, it is a more common disad, but it's a disad that not that many people don't run well. So if you're prepped well for it, you can beat it. Would it be okay if, like, because you know that there's like a representative of the minority and the majority? So would it be better if you had something saying, like, okay, the majority of the total likes it, but the um, representative of the minority is for it too? Doggett, what do you be? I mean, if I understand the question right, yeah, that would be great, but given the way our political situation is right now, um, that would be like a magic bullet. You're probably not going to find that card because um, we're pretty split. I mean, I, I will tell you guys this. My, my thing on the politics dis ad, um, we ran a politics dis ad in which we talked about uh, sequestration, and it had already passed, and nobody on the circuit called us out on it. Um, people were running an immigration politics this ad in which they were talking about the Senate will pass immigration and you guys didn't realize that there's a house out there and the house was never going to pass it and nobody ever made that argument. And so I, I've begun to think that the reason we have bad politics this ads is because we've got bad people answering the politics this ad. And I don't know if it's that you guys don't know anything about the government and how it works or if you're just not researching. But like I told you on my lecture, if you don't like politics and you don't want it run, learn something about politics. Because most of the scenarios don't make sense. It's talking about Obama spending political capital on something that the Republicans already like. So it's like, okay, why would Republicans get upset that my bill passes and take it out on something that they really like or vice versa? And those answers never come out. It just is incredibly frustrating. They're just angry. They just don't want anything to happen. <laughs> yeah. I also do feel like that's a lazy scenario, though. Yeah. I think, like, <laughs> what's a lazy scenario? Like, teams that do that, teams that have their scenario be based on. Uh, you guys ran an immigration politics this ad in which it was based on the Senate passing immigration. Right. And I watched Brian run against somebody in which the other person didn't get up and go. The House will never pass this bill. This is a bad politics at that. And I'm not saying you know, I have good evidence, right. but I'm saying in general, there is nothing that the affirmative could have done that would have affected the passage of the immigration bill. It was not going to pass the House. It just wasn't. And from our experience, like I said, we were running sequestration after it already passed. And nobody told us it's already passed. And that's because people aren't researching. I meant the situation where they're expecting backlash over a bill that is supported by the party that they say is angry. Like, I don't really see that all that often. I uh, I mean, I know that Truman State is one of these two that. politics does that, that way. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Is that, and obviously the ones that are bad are going to stick out in my mind because those are the most frustrating rounds. Did you talk about the different ways in which the link debate can work? There's different kinds of politics that Yeah. Yeah, I touched on that. Uh, can we talk a little bit about fiat? Fiat? Yeah, because this is something that, like, uh, you see a lot in different forms of debate. It's like people talk about how fiat interacts with the politics this ad. Because I feel like a lot of the political capital this ads rely on this, like, implicit assumption that passing your plan specifically, like, in our case, passing, say, like, ratifying the CBD, took a lot of political capital for Obama to do, right? Yeah. So, like, the question is, for me, do the principles of fiat, where, like, your, pan, your plan passes, ensure that it also passes in a way that is not contentious? So, this is going to be based completely on the foundations that are based on the opinions of my coaches. So, take that little, little bit with a grain of salt. The sure. way I've always been taught that fiat interacts with the politics DA is that the specific, I guess the specific amount of political capital to, that is assumed to be uh, utilized by the plan doesn't necessarily matter under the assumption that political capital itself is a finite, um, a finite unit of measurement, basically. So that when you, so it's generally assumed, say there are a certain number of bills that are actually going to be voted on this Congress. Sure. And the political capital is distributed in various amounts between those, getting those bills passed. So once you add something 
that isn't kind of on Congress's current docket, it's assumed that it's going to utilize some political capital. Um, I don't think the, I'm not sure why, I think, I do think that a lot of politics decides assume right. that it is going to be contentious. If the link, if the link is like Republicans hate it, like the entire reason your access